I'm Dr. Yuri Ladebaum. I would like to thank Drs. Coomerly and Wilcox for inviting our group to prepare this commentary on our randomized controlled study of citalopram versus placebo in non-depressed patients with irritable bowel syndrome, or IBS. We decided to perform this study because IBS is a very common condition with few proven therapies. It has been common practice for many years to use antidepressants, including the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, or SSRIs, like citalopram, to treat symptoms in IBS. When we launched our study, there were no controlled studies of SSRIs in IBS. We were interested particularly in whether citalopram has any clinical benefit in patients with IBS without depression. The reason for this is that there is a higher prevalence of depression in persons with IBS than in those without. Patients with IBS and depression have a very clear indication to consider treatment with an SSRI. However, in those without depression, the potential benefit could be very different. We were also interested in exploring the relationship between clinical symptoms and quality of life and clinical symptoms and rectal sensitivity. In the laboratory, patients with IBS as a group show greater sensitivity than control subjects to stimuli in the gastrointestinal tract such as rectal balloon distension. It has been suggested that physiologic testing to assess changes in visceral sensitivity might be a way to screen for promising pharmaceuticals for IBS. However, there are scant data on the longitudinal relationship between clinical symptoms and responses to rectal distension. We randomized 54 non-depressed patients with IBS to citalopram or placebo in an eight-week trial. Symptoms were assessed weekly, and quality of life and rectal sensitivity to balloon distension were assessed at baseline and at end of study. Our principal result was that patients treated with citalopram did not achieve a higher rate of adequate relief of symptoms than those who received placebo. Specific symptoms, including abdominal pain, also did not improve more with citalopram than with placebo. Quality of life scores improved slightly in both study groups over the eight weeks of study, but there were no differences between groups. Finally, over the eight weeks of study, in both groups, symptoms improved in some patients and worsened in others. Similarly, sensitivity to rectal distension decreased in some and increased in others. But we found no significant correlation between these changes. That is, decreases in clinical symptoms were not significantly correlated with decreases in sensitivity to rectal balloon distension. Since the launch of our study, other studies of SSRIs in IBS have been reported. Some have reported benefit and others not. Studies have differed in design and in the specific medication tested. When we consider all the evidence, we conclude that citalopram is likely to provide little or no benefit over placebo in non-depressed patients with IBS. In the future, we hope that better understanding of the pathophysiology of IBS may lead to novel therapies with significant clinical benefit.